Who turned him down? Rabbam, chapter seven, number seven, closing of this whole subject matter. The person harbors a feeling saying, although you didn't lend me, despite that, I will lend you. Your violation of harboring your feeling. You should totally erase it from your heart and do not withhold that feeling, the negative feeling. She calls Machu Gober Sadova Bizokro. She says something interesting. Because as long as you you know there, you retain that negative feeling, Shema Yovalinko. Rob is putting a new understanding on it. You know, all fences are only rabbinical. There, there is a, a Torah fence, a Nazir, a, a Nazarite is not permitted to enter into a vineyard. Because a, a Nazarite is not permitted to what? To drink wine or any grape or grape derivative. Entering into a vineyard, he's exposing himself to a degree of temptation. He may partake of those grapes. Therefore, he's not permitted to go into the vineyard. That's a Torah fence. It seems from the Rambam, the reason why he's not permitted to harbor ill feeling, he says, because ultimately it may lead to revenge. Therefore, it should be erased. See, the way I explained it was based on the Chinuch, that the reason why you were denied was not because of the individual, because God didn't want you to be a beneficiary, to be accommodated in this area. So harboring ill feeling, I'm a better person than you, has nothing to do with a better person. The reason why you were denied was because God denied you. Therefore, as they say in the vernacular, you're barking up the wrong tree. That's You're missing the point. That's not the point. Rabbam says the reason why the Torah doesn't want you to harbor ill feeling, although you're doing the right thing, because ultimately, Shem Yovolinko, that may lead to, to, to revenge. You know, how long can I restrain my feeling? And ultimately, you're going to withhold it. And if you're going to withhold it, that's called revenge. The Torah is adamantly opposed to harboring ill feeling. You must erase it, eradicate it, the sin from your heart that you don't remember. It doesn't touch you whatsoever. I mean, this something is very difficult. You know, what happens if you don't express it? Let's say you give it to him and say, I'm more than happy to give it to him. You give it to him with a smile. But factually, in your heart, you're still harboring ill feeling, saying, I'm going to do the right thing despite. Despite the man doesn't deserve it, I'm going to do the right thing. But you have that negative feeling in your in your heart. I mean, so are you in violation? I mean, factually, you are harboring ill feeling, even though you didn't verbalize it. Because he's still pushing that boulder up the mountain. You know, how long could you push a boulder up a mountain? Eventually comes down and, and, and crushes you. Interesting. Rambam concludes that the only way you're able to maintain society if people learn to forget. Forgive and forget. Because if you don't forget, you're not going to forgive. That's a, that's a rule of thumb. And since society means we have relationships with one another, we accommodate one another, we interact with one another, this could cause a breakdown society. Because if we have negative feeling about one another, we're not going to accommodate one another as we should accommodate one another. And since harboring ill feeling ultimately brings to that, therefore, it's something which has to be eradicated because the proper behavior pattern is to maintain a society, you have to have these social relationships, which you can only have if you don't have that ill feeling to one another. That's the Rambam. It's very interesting. You know, what's going on with anti-Semitism in the world today? It's not to be believed. What's going on, and it's going from bad to worse in the United States, college campuses, Protests in New York City, people screaming at the Fada, let's maintain it at the Fada. I mean, things they don't even relate to how extreme this behavior is. And there's no law and order. The police are not raining in on these people at all. That they're facing monuments, they're facing do many things they're doing for the sake of what they what they're protesting. And 
Factually, who's the who's who's at the short end of the stick? The Jew. This is anti-Semitism rearing its head to a point that God forbid if it gets out of control, they're gonna be they're gonna be victims of this anti-Semitism. And if it goes viral, Sholem, you don't even know where this thing to go. Okay. Now, an a Jew has an obligation to love his fellow Jew. A Jew has no obligation to, to, to love his fellow Gentile, his fellow human being. But Jew has to love his fellow Jew. And whether Gentile loves us or not, it's totally irrelevant. Of course, we should maintain a good relationship with them. That would be a Kiddush Hashem, sanctifying God's name. They'll appreciate who we are, what we are, the way we behave, what we contribute. Fine, that's great. But if they don't, it's okay. Because what is Jewish society? Jewish society is it's with, contained within Jewish society. What we're talking about is you cannot have a society unless you have human relationships. And if there's all kinds of feelings of hate and, and, and grudges to bear, you can't interact with one another appropriately to maximize our relationships. But where does God want those relationships to be maximized? within the Jewish community. That's what it's about. The non-Jew, just one moment, I have a call from Buenos Aires. I'm sorry. We're recording. Hello? That that the Jew doesn't intermingle in Gentile society, God has no problem with that. We find, very interesting, until Yaakov fathered the 12 tribes, the patriarchs were involved, very involved in outreach. Once the 12 tribes were established, Yaakov's main focus was his family. Why? Because all the energy to the world is generated from the Jewish people. Based on what the way we behave, and the way we act and interact, we generate a level of purity to the world it's like you have smog and if a wind comes and blows out the smog, everybody is able to see. Everybody, everybody's able to inhale healthy air. That's the job of the Jew. The light out to the nations is we have to generate a beacon of light that the nations of the world, the world sees what truth is. But if we ourselves are dim and we're turning down the intensity of that light, that's only an indication where we're at. So we have to gird and strengthen, shore up whatever who we are. I have another quote from Israel. Okay. So it's interesting. So the reason why we have to behave appropriately with one another is because we have to maintain a healthy, cohesive support of society among ourselves. We have to be there for one another. We have to pray for one another. We have to assist one another. Literally. Because if not, we become non-functional. No, you can't be a hermit. No, he go lock himself away. I live for myself. No such thing. You know, there's a midrash. The midrash says, in the portion of the Tzavim, it's toward one of the last closing portions of the Torah. Atim Nitzavayim Kulchem. If you stand together, you stand. If you stand divided, you fall. What is it now, Liz, do? If you have a one branch, a thin branch, you could snap it easily. You take a thick bunch of, of the same branches, you can't break them. If you're together, you can't break us. If we're divided, we're fractionalized, we become vulnerable to everything, and then we will fall. So it's important, crucial, that Jews have to be committed to one another. We have to be unified. Unified, spiritually unified, physically, in every sense of the word. And that guarantees our existence. If we're Echod, Hashem watches over us as Echod, as one, as one entity, because then we reflect God's unity of being. <laughs>